If you've always had the dream of becoming a rock star and playing guitar on stage, having fans, making records, having companies ask you to play their gear, and I guess most importantly, making money from it, then contrary to what most people will tell you, it is still possible. Yes, the music industry has changed, it's very different to how it was, but the honest truth is you can earn a living playing rock guitar. And in this video, my guest and I discuss how he does it and how you can too. Today, I talked to Draku, a very hardworking and skilled musician who's found a way to turn rock guitar into a very viable career. What he shares with us is pretty simple, but if you watch and listen closely, you'll realize that what he does is actually extremely well thought through, and he has loads of insights on how to keep the rock star dream alive. So let's go to the chat and find out how Draku makes money with guitars. Hey, Draku. Hey, Andy. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. It's a lovely, a uh, cloudy but lovely day in the Black Forest out here. So, so you're in Germany, right? I'm in Germany. Yes. Yeah, I've seen videos of you, and you're out doing crazy stuff, and all these beautiful trees around. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, it does. It does. It, it's the area I've I've grown up in. So, um, you know, for for some people, they take vacations here, but for me, it's it's my home. Lucky Draco. Yes. So we're talking today about making money with the guitars and mm -hmm. how would you define your main role with guitars and how that is a, a career for you? Well, I'm an old school guy, right? This is like a pretty ignorant thing to say about oneself, but you know, I'm I'm an old school. I'm 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 a rock guitar player. I'm I'm a rock and roll musician. Um I kind of want to do the old school approach. I want to write songs. I want to play guitar. I want to go on stage. I want to kick ass. So that's basically what I want to do. And of course, that is what I want to make profitable. So um, there's the part being a musician, an entertainer, songwriter, whatever. But then again, we're living in 2020. And um, times, of course, have changed the business the music business, the music industry. So there's a lot of different things that you can do, right? Mm -hmm. Like um, we met on several accounts where I have been in the position of a uh, product specialist, as they call it, right? When we've met at the many, many exhibitions that we've met over the years. Um, so... You could do that, or you could just be a hired gun in studio, on stage. So, um, yeah, there's there's different ways. So I kind of define making money with guitars as whatever you can, whenever you can make money while touching a guitar. Me too. Right? That, that's how so, I define it. <laughs> so if if it's if it's like if you're a if you're a YouTuber. Or if you're a product specialist, if you're a studio musician, if you're a session guitar player for live shows, a songwriter, whatever. Whenever you can make profit while making something with the guitar, showing it, playing it, whatever. Mm -hmm. So um, we spoke to David Wallerman recently, who's an online <laughs> yes. guitar educator. Teaching, right, right. Yeah. So you've mentioned some other ways uh, of making money with guitars there. So the first one was product specialist. <laughs> Assume that I know nothing about product specialists. What is a product specialist? <laughs> oh, these are strange creatures living in basements. And no, so um, a product specialist basically works for a company, a guitar company, amplifier company, uh, you name it, um, and just you know travels around the country with a couple of guys from the brand and just shows off the products and how they work, what they do, and um, you know just. I guess it's some sort of educational purpose to it, you know, to like if there's a new amp, because I'm doing this for, of course, Vox, amp, uh, Vox amps, as many people know in Germany. Um, so if there's a new amp, they ask me, hey, can you go out and show the people, the good people of guitar player land? Can you show them the secret powers of this and how it works and what it does? So... You just go out and you just demonstrate. You play, you have a guitar in your hand and you play and you show the settings of the amp. Like you can uh, watch on Andy's channel where we presented a couple of things. So. Yes, we did. 
<laughs> that was at uh, Guitar Summit in, in Mannheim in Germany. Yeah, right. And also right. we met at NAMM. So yes. if people are watching this thinking, okay, that's a way I can play guitar and make money. I can go to NAMM in California <laughs> or maybe Nashville. I can go right. to all these cool places and, and touch a guitar and get paid for it. How did you get into being a product specialist? That's a, a, I've never asked you that before. So what, what was the, that's a great gig, or it seems like a great gig. How yeah. did you get offered the job? Oh, this is a fun, this is a fun story too. So in 2015, or it must have been 14 or 15, I don't recall, I guess 15, I have done my first record and, um, you know, first demo record coming out, being played on big radio stations, getting promo because I actually won the German Rock and Pop Award as best guitarist um that year. Yeah, thanks <laughs> so because because this is this is a dangerous a dangerous thing because we guitar players are pretty you know we're a strange breed so to speak so certainly you know if you're being called the best uh that can cause more problems than it does any good as i had to find out the hard way but uh, nevertheless, there was a time. Do you remember the Musikmesse? I do. You know, back in those glory days when there still was the Musikmesse. Yes. So I went to the Musikmesse in Frankfurt and uh, I had my record and I wanted to get an endorsement deal, right? And um, so I had my record and I was walking through the Musikmesse and handing it out to all these pro to all these product managers from the various brands. So I was looking for a new amplifier. And I had recorded the record on a Vox amp. So um, the thing was that the day Come on, was... tell us tell us which amp. You know, I've got a geek out there. Which one? <laughs> it was a it was a it was a cheap not a cheap. It was a modeling amp. Okay, the VT it was a, series, uh, maybe. Yes, it was an old VT series. It was a VT forty or something. Oh, it had classic. Like, Love it. Yes, yes. Like with the tube in the in the preamp section. Because th you gotta think about it. I didn't have any money. I mean I mean I had like I had spent 350 euros on that amp and I got a telecaster as as a gift. Because again, making money with guitars, you need a guitar to make money with. So mm -hmm. this guitar will probably cost you money to begin with. So but long story short, I ended up at the last moments of the music message before it was closing i was like yeah so there's vox amps whatever here's a cd blah i'm about to head out because i had a car crash when i got to music message so i <laughs> left with no car and it was the day was totally down the drains for me so um i met this guy from vox and we talked and and he was like no nah, i don't have a card but you can photograph the name of my badge and i was like yeah right because you're gonna get back to me it by photographing the name of your batch. I will never see this guy again. So um, I took the photograph and after the music mess, I set my butt down and just started messaging all these guys, you know, emails like, hey, we met at the mess, blah, blah, blah. Are you interested? Here's a link. And he really was the guy who, who got back to me. There was a couple of other guys, but he was the first guy who was like, yeah, right. I met you. I think you're cool. Maybe we can do something. Hey, how about this? I send you this and this amp. Let's go. And it was right from that moment. It just, it was just that moment that started it. So there's always that funny saying that we have at Vox Amps Germany that like the relationship between Vox Amps and, and Draku is like, is like a car crash, you know, <laughs> because it started with a car crash. <laughs> started with a crash. Yes, it did. It did. Oh, man. It yeah so and, and and this is how and this is how we got um how we got involved and then they had a gig in munich uh like i don't know a couple of weeks after that where they said like hey um there is this opportunity where you could make a little money being a promoter being a product specialist i have never tried it that um, up until that point and they just, you know, they just gave me a shot and said, hey, how about you might want to try it? Mm -hmm. And I did. And I really liked it. And um, because you get to know a lot of people and you get to know a lot of people from the business. And it turned out that I'm actually not that bad at it. So 
I think you're one of the better ones. Uh, it's always fun coming to you. It's very clear that you enjoy what you do. Oh, my goodness. Now, I'm, I'm not throwing out compliments. I mean, what I do as part of my job making money with the guitars is I interview right. people and I check out new products and I talk to lots of product demonstrators and specialists. Right. Right. And in the nicest way possible, some of them don't want to be there even, you know, or some of them, and that's right. a very small amount, a very small amount. And it's a hard job. So anybody watching this, a product oh, yes. demonstrator and specialist is tough. It is. It it's is not just it's not just standing there playing guitar and saying, Hey, look at me, you know, check my I'm the best guitar player, two thousand fifteen. Right. Whatever. Right. It's right. It's a tough job. It's a job. Um, it is. It is. But it's a great it's it's a great thing that there is such thing as that out there that you can actually enter the business and almost come close to make a living out of that because I know people who make livings out of that. Mm -hmm. For me, it's not, it's not my main occupation, um, but I wouldn't want to live without it, you know? And, and this is, this is the, this is the interesting point or the most important point, I guess. So my first occupation is being a rock and roll musician. I write songs, I play guitar, I go out, I tour, I record, I produce. So, that is a total different job from being a product specialist. As a product specialist, of course, people come out to the to the exhibitions and say, hey, this is Sebastian Draco. I've seen him live there and there. He's a cool guy or he sucks or whatever. Um, but you're not supposed to be um, selling whatever you would want to sell as being Sebastian Draco. Mm -hmm. because if i'm there for vox amps or for lock guitars or for whoever my first order of business is all right i'm here for the company so i get paid to promote the company let me promote the company right and of course it helps if you have a reputation so but you got to be aware that the first you got to be aware of what is the job description mm -hmm. right because if you would, if like turn it around, if you, I, I was, I was losing my, my, my sock here, um, because I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You need some more work. Buy some new socks. Get this man some new socks. Get me some new socks. So, uh, because imagine, imagine the other way around. You were a badass guitar player, but you were working for a company, and somebody calls you up to go to. Uh, do a, a studio session and you end up in the studio session talking about how great of an amp the AC30 is instead of laying it down right so again um, yeah you got to be aware of the job description and you got to be aware of the business that you're into and this is also I think a point that maybe we should talk about the business of okay H hit me with the business well what I find difficult is that artists guitar players musicians um it has a it has a tradition in our society way back over the hundreds of years um that art was opposing to really industry and economy right because there was you were working in the factory and when you want to give your brain a day off you listen to some music so now what we need to understand or what what artists young guitar players uh who might want to do something in this business need to understand is do you want to participate in the business because if you want to participate in the business you got to be well aware that this is a business with like rules there's profit to be made there are rules that you got to play along to and these might not be what you imagine in the in the romantic picture of yeah rock and roll music freedom that might not be the case there it's might kind of be... almost it's anti rock and roll isn't it, it, it on the surface right there's, there's right. rock and roll and then there's business but music exactly. and business it's 50 50 or possibly more business than music on occasion yes um especially especially in especially in the world of being a rock a rock guitar player because mm -hmm. if if you want to hire me for a gig, right? I need to I need to have the guts. And this is a problem that many young bands have. 
I need to have the guts to say 300 euros or 500 euros or whatever the number is, right? You will need to have the guts to be a business person in that moment because you will have to demand something. And and it's an interesting thing because you have to demand a amount of money from somebody for something that you enjoy, yes. right? So normally the thing is, if you enjoy something, that's already enough for you, right? Because you're enjoying it. Mm-hmm. But it's the dream. Right. But if you want to work in this business and make money by working in this business, you got to be able to say, I demand a certain amount of money for my work. Uh, a compensation for your time. Exactly. Time being the only Skills. true currency we have. Skill. Yeah, I was talking uh, earlier to a, a, a few freelancers again, mm-hmm. and um, we used a, um, a story where it was in case of a lawyer, for example. If you go to a lawyer and say, I have a 10-minute question, uh, a really mm-hmm. simple question, and the lawyer answers it in 10 minutes, and it costs, I don't know, 400 euros. <laughs> Right. That seems a lot of money, but you're not paying for those 10 minutes. You're paying for all the education and experience that lawyer exactly. made so that they could exactly. answer that question in 10 minutes. Exactly. So when you're hiring a band, when you're hiring a musician, you're paying for rehearsal time. You're paying for the gear that they had to buy. You're paying for the fact that they're, you know, they're out and the hours they're doing. And you're yes. paying for, what, for whatever it is that little je ne sais quoi, that X factor that the artist yes. has entertainment value. Exactly. Like, for instance, if you want to hire a plumber, um, he's he's probably finished an apprenticeship that took like three years. So in these three years, he had uh, five days a week or six days a week where he's been, where he's been working 40 hours, right? Or maybe mm-hmm. 20 hours and the other 20 hours he went to school. This is the basic principle of 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 a of work in in Germany at least right you have 40 hours you work 7 hours so um as a guitar player you couldn't you couldn't make the i i have an apprenticeship of plus 13 years and at some days it it's it's up to 7 hours for like i don't know 30 days in a row if i think back to when i was starting out so the expertise that I have, the knowledge that I have, the skills that I have, I went I went through more than than uh, than three years of, of of education to to reach my my level of skills. So, and to put that in perspective, um, the last study I I read was, and that's that's actually pretty accurate if I look at myself. Um, out of uh, 35,000 self-employed musicians in Germany, the approximate um, wage that they have, that, that they accumulate themselves, is from 700 to 900 euros a month. So we're talking 10 to 11,000 euros a year. Now think about that. And if I look at my... Um, numbers i i find them really approving this study because that's what i accumulate some years too and um if you're touring thursday friday saturday that's already more than 40 hours a week so there comes monday tuesday wednesday with booking with practicing with uh writing the bills uh with all of that comes comes on top. So you're probably to 70 to 80 hours. You're probably working, yeah, 70 to 80 hours a week um, for like seven to 900 euros a month. That is the rock musician side. So if you are not prepared to go through that for a couple of years, probably look for someone else. <laughs> <laughs> there are easier ways to make money. Become oh, a plumber, yeah. for example. Become a plumber. These these are good guys. I mean, craftsmanship, yeah. right? I yeah. mean, in fact, I I hired a plumber recently, and um, he was expensive, and it made me reconsider. What the heck am I doing? See, All same right. with YouTube. Same with YouTube. If you want to have a successful YouTube channel, probably right. don't do it about guitars. Do it about squashing watermelons with your car or something like exactly. that. Exactly, because they are making bank. 
Yes. But um, yeah, so uh, I want to play the part of someone who may be watching this thinking, yeah, but Vox sent you two free amps. That's free gear. <laughs> well, what good does free gear do when it comes to uh, paying my rent? Or or, uh, or or shopping for groceries, right? So the thing is, it's not. First of all, it's not free amps because with every amp that has been sent to me, probably this one, for instance, you can't see that on the webcam right I now that we're talking to, but I'm pointing at it, and you can see it on the big camera. Hang on. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah, right that one. So they sent me this amp uh, and say, "Hey, can you please check it out?" And um, because this is the amp that we want you to talk to the people about on the next couple of shows. So I say, okay, this is now, now again, this is my job description to, to be a expert when it comes to the amp. So if somebody walks in and says, Hey, is there a USB interface line out that I can di uh, record directly? Uh, how many amps models are in there? How does this work? How does that work? That I know what's up. So mm -hmm. The free amps, that is the product specialist side. The free amps, they're not free. I don't own them. I have to send them back once it's over, right? And the rock musician side is I need amplifiers to work because I need an amp for touring. I need an amp for rehearsal and I need an amp for maybe at home, right? This is the perfect scenario, having an amp at home in a rehearsal room and on tour. So Vox looks at what I do and say, all right, this guy's promoting us. He, he's playing good shows. He's having, uh, he's, he's, he's raising a, quite of a lot of attention. He, ha he has TV interviews. He's doing big stages, whatever. Of course, it would be cool if there was an AC30 standing like right there, right? So um, I say, okay, I, I will play your AC30 because I, lo I love the amp and I need an amp. And this is a misconception that so many people have. You wouldn't ever endorse stuff you wouldn't need. Because, I mean, how many guitars do you own, Andy? More than 20. All right. So let's say five or six companies would say, hey, Andy, we want to give you a free guitar. At some point, you're like, eh, hold on. I don't need more guitars. Oh, I'm at that point. Exactly. Because... Once you get your first apartment, your first own apartment, I mean, talk about having as much guitars as possible. Right now in, in my room that, that we're in, which is my living and my bedroom, I have a Tele, a Strat, an acoustic guitar, and a bass. And that's, that's enough. And, and there's a storage room over there. <laughs> and there's like three more guitars that I do not need. So I just, I just, I just wait until I can send them back because I mean, I still need space for my bed, for my, for my, for, for all my other things. Right. So the point is when you're a fan and it's a hobby and you enjoy it, you enjoy collecting. It's a way different ball game than really having to work with it. Mm. And, all, and also, if you want to work with something, you need your workhorse. You, yes. you probably have a guitar you call your workhorse, right? Absolutely. That if, if, it, if beep hits the fan, you need that one guitar that you can rely on. Yeah, if I'm going to a show or I have to do a demo or I have to go to a, um, some exhibition or something, I can only take one guitar. I know which one it will be because there you go. It, it services me and it, it, it's the tool for the job, quite literally. <laughs> right. Right. And if you look at, at all the other great rock stars out there, uh, apart from you and me and everybody mm. watching, apart from mm. us, all the other great rock stars out there, um, I, was, I was driving through the, through the valley behind Los Angeles with uh, Ron Thorne in January. And he said, look outside, there's, there's like this, this industry um, area, industrial area. And he said, there's all the storage spaces for all the rock stars. They have all their gear is stored there. Like Kiss has an extremely huge storage space and they have like 500 guitars there. But then again, when you play in Kiss, okay, you can rent an external storage space and have 500 guitars. But if you're yeah. 
just Andy or Draku or whoever's watching right now, um, you might not need 500 guitars. <laughs> I think personally, I've been through several phases, you know, of, of desiring gear mm -hmm. and being given gear, then realizing that companies profit from me playing their instruments or pedals or amps, and then gear becoming a tool still fun i still love every every time i'm touching a guitar i still it's the best thing hey this is this is a true thing and and that's also what you said when you did the previous interview with david um there's no amount of money that like i make money while playing a guitar being a rock and roll musician i'm i'm a rock musician this is the coolest job in the world Trust me, it's the greatest, in my estimation, my humble estimation, I just love being a rock musician because maybe you only get 800 euros a month. Okay, but you are in the eye of the public and in, in when you look in the mirror, you are a working rock musician. You write, you perform, you compose. This is just, it just feels different from, from, from being a plumber not that being a plumber might feel bad just it's just different it's just a whole different thing like imagine imagine how a professional football player feels or imagine how tom cruise must feel crazy probably <laughs> <laughs> no so, so i was just imagining how tom cruise felt and it, it, it didn't feel that good actually <laughs> <laughs> yeah probably so the the thing is um i always say you remember the old MasterCard commercial? Like, uh, this costs so much and this is, uh, the bill is that much and it's that high and you just pay it this way. And then for everything else, like the thing that is not, how, how do you say it, payable? That is... Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's priceless is the, priceless. the thing you're getting. So, everything, so, so for everything that's... So, and then they come to the point, oh, this and that is priceless. For everything else, there's MasterCard right yes. and that, that that's always something that i say when something crazy happens on stage and somebody's freaking out in the first row and you don't see stuff like that except from when you're a rock musician and i look to my bass player and i say for everything else there's master cut but this jesus christ <laughs> you know so absolutely i mean you you're painting a very um cool picture of what it's like to be you um and I think you know, for people watching this thinking, you know, I'm a rock musician, I, how do I do that? I think that um, what you're saying is what you do is very simple. All you have to do is work really, really hard. Yes. You got to work really hard, not only on your playing, but also on your mindset. Because if your mindset is not there, it probably won't get you, won't get you anywhere. Um, and... I know I hate it myself, all right? So to everybody who's like, no, but this sucks and I don't want to do this. I hate it myself and trust me, I think it's ugly. And like I said before, art has always been uh, opposing to economy and, um, and business. But if you want to play the music business, accept it as such a business and you got to approach it as a businessman you as a salesperson and i know that many many artists self-proclaimed artists have a problem with uh being a salesman but hey this unfortunately this is how the majority of the business works i couldn't agree more i think that um I think the people that are lucky enough to go to some kind of music education school, which I come from the from the the school of um, gigging. You know, I never went to. Mm -hmm. I did try a few music education places, but it, it wasn't for me. Whatever it was, we weren't a cool fit. Um, but what I missed out on was the business side, was the yeah. writing contracts, and I got you know classic tales. I got screwed several times from through my own stupidity. Right. Um, you know, I had a, a manager at one point who was like, yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to take you there. We're going to do this. We're going to add this. And then he screwed me. And then, 
luckily there was so little money involved that it didn't really affect me financially, but uh, it was everything <laughs> I had, you know, it was quite literally everything. Um, it wasn't and, much money. And, and, and there's another Sorry, carry on. emotional side to it, uh, that, that, that you just, that you just, uh, mentioned, um, because when you throw all of all that you have, you, you, all your energy, all your creativity, um, you throw it in there, um, be prepared that somebody is going to crush it. He's going to crush it. He's going to destroy it. He's going to drag it through the mud. And you're going to be super emotionally attached to what you're doing. And that stuff that you're so emotionally attached to, rightfully so, is going to be dragged through the mud, spit on, stepped on, and crushed. And if you're not prepared to go through that, uh, probably do something else. <laughs> because it's unfair. No, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of fighting with, fighting with myself. It's unfair. No, actually, it's fair. Because if we all have to go through that, it's fair again. But especially social media, <laughs> yeah. ever since social media, social media gave us the impression that everybody has to do the right to do everything and only be received... Um, positively right so because there's mm -hmm. only there's so only thumbs up likes yes mm. right there's only likes there's only hearts on instagram and of course youtube has uh, uh thumbs this, down yeah. but still to get a five thousand thumbs down you still have to get five thousand clicks right so that again you know so that is a newer problem uh, a newer problem and uh david wellyman the the teacher you talk to He made an extremely nice point in the in 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 the in the last interview that you did with him. Don't look on that. Don't look on the clicks. Don't look on the likes. If you're really about the business and about the music, about the guitar, about the you know if it's a product or if it's if it's a riff, if it's a style that you want to demonstrate, if you're really about that, don't give a beep about. If somebody likes it, oh, he left a comment saying, "Who gives a?" I'm not allowed to curse, right? You said I, I should stay playing. But who you gives a? I'll, I'll beep it. Who gives a? Sh <laughs> who gives a? <laughs> who gives a? <laughs> Some idiot on the internet hiding behind his computer wall was typing something, and now he feels strong. These are the kind of guys that get beat up in primary school, you know. So. <laughs> Just, Can I ask I'm you um, when you yes. when you do a when you do a demonstration? So you're at Guitar Summit or NAM or somewhere where you're demonstrating. Does yes. anyone ever come up to you and say the sort of things that you get in YouTube comments? Something negative? Has anyone ever come up to you and say you suck? I hate you. I think your hair's silly and you can't play guitar. Well, uh, it sure happened being a rock musician, um, yeah. being a But I'm talk product I'm talking specialist. About the job um, I think. I think it happened a couple of times when you when you just messed up a little riff or something and somebody was like uh and and then again you have to you have to really watch out because so many guitar players are so elitist and they think you know they're they're somewhat you know a they're the crown of creation and um especially when you represent a historic brand such as Vox Of course, there's going to be a guy who who's going to come up and say, but my AC30 from 1967 has the old Telefunken and these tubes and this, and you don't know nothing about it. Uh, great. Congratulations. And you just got to keep your composure, be cool, kill him with kindness, and just be like, oh, really? Nice. Yeah, nice. So, um... All I know is um, that everybody else is here to see this AC30 and this is not your AC30. Your AC30 is cool. Maybe you saw it once. Maybe a friend owns this. Maybe you heard of it and now you just want to brag. It's all good, but you're not the center of the show. I'm neither. So let's stay neutral. This is the center of the show. You know, that's what you got to do. Or you just hit him with a mop cut. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's always that option in real life that you there's don't have on the right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, dude, um, we didn't even touch on like being a hired gun or any of the other things you talked about. We've talked mainly about um, 
product demonstrating and specialism. Yes. But it's been amazing. It's been enlightening. I've learned stuff about you and about your job that we don't ever get the time to talk about. You know, we do see each other. Again, another thing I'd like to bring up, like you and I have a friendship, um, if we may call it that. And um, (laughs) what we don't do is we don't spend time together. So in this business, in working in what you and I do where we cross paths, you have to be very useful, uh, used to being friends with people you only see twice a year, but having mm-hmm. a real deep relationship with that person and, exactly. and considering them friends. It's, um, so again, back to the emotional side of it, you've got to be prepared for, ah, oh, I really love hanging out with that guy, but okay, so there's a show coming up. Right, I'm going. I know it's a job, but it's it's a gift to be able to spend time with people that um, share the same passion as you do. Right, right. And to piggyback on what you just said, um, we are a small circle. And everybody who meets at those shows, if it's the NAM, if it's uh, the Musik Produktiv Messe, if it's the Guitar Summit, it doesn't matter. Everyone you meet there, like you and I or all the other guys, um, you know what they do and you know Mm. where they come from. And this is the reason Mm. why we are able to bond extremely good in a really short amount of time. Because to get to that level, everybody has basically, maybe someone, someone have to, has in some, in someone's way, it has been a little bit different and your way has been a little bit different here and there. And, but basically you had to go through the same stuff. So Mm. you're kind of meeting, you're meeting eye to eye, right? So, um, and if you realize that you like someone from the business and you can, you can you can talk openly and and he's a cool dude you will bond instantly and even even though we see each other maybe like three times a year when it i mean two two or three times a year Not this year but meet, uh, right? yeah right yeah so but it's it's not like it's not like i have to do any any catching up getting to know you feel you out process because i know right there that's andy that's my guy we're going to hang. So um, you will realize that. And uh, hopefully for a new guy coming in, um, hopefully it won't be too hard for you because it can, it can be sometimes. And a lot of us can be real dicks, but mostly we nice people. <laughs> the people of guitar yeah. land. <laughs> I, right. I would say it's a very high percentage of good people. And I have I have one wisdom that I want to leave you with. Oh, um, please. I I forgot. Uh, I, it must have been, um, it must have been my buddy Niels, who was a product specialist for Fender back in the day. We would we were sitting at some messer, uh, at some exhibition, and somebody said, "You know, it's not that hard um, making it in our business. Um, just don't be an asshole." And Niels was sitting next to me and, and, and he looked over and he said, you know, not being an asshole is probably not too bad of an advice for life in general. And I, and it was that moment where I thought, this is some true. <laughs> <laughs> so again, yeah. man, it's, it's so simple when you look at it, you just have to work really hard and not just at right. playing guitar, but it's very clear from knowing you and talking to you this conversation. Hopefully people watching this can understand that, that you're very much you, your personality is you and what you do is totally intertwined with who you are as a person. You're not putting on a sales face. You're not putting on a rock star no. face. You're not putting on an expert and an amp face. It's all the same one right. beautiful person. And right. That, You're that's, just highlighting you know, that, that's, a different that's the dream. side. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you have to put on different hats, of course. Uh, absolutely. Right. right. And that, when you said in this conversation about, okay, I'm there today for the amp, and at my show, right. I'm there to be Draco, the rock musician, but there's an amp with me. You have to share the limelight with the different aspects of your job. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It goes Symbiosis. like this. A symbiosis. Yeah. It's like when you go to an opera or to or to the theater, you might dress different than you would go hang out with the lads and have a couple of drinks. But it's still the same old stinky you. 
Okay, well, I think that's probably the line that we can leave everybody with. <laughs> that's great. Um, <laughs> mate, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I've learned a lot. Uh, I've, but more important than that, I've been reminded of why it's cool to play guitar and how you can turn that into a job and how you respect that. So thank you for the the positivity and the passion and the very clear, intelligent explanations. It's been my pleasure. Thank you, dude. Okay, well, where do we find you online? Where can people find Draco? Well, you can, of course, find me on all these social media outlets. Just type in Sebastian Draco. Um, there's a couple of YouTube videos uh, with my music and also other stuff because I'm trying to do other stuff as my management told me it might be a good idea. Um, and of course, there's a homepage, uh, draku13.com. But yeah, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Bandcamp. I just, I'm just now on Bandcamp. I don't know. Wow. All of this digital worldly stuff. But hey, um, whenever you're around and you see the name Draku somewhere and I'm playing, come over and we have a cool rock and roll show. Thanks, man. And uh, I, I have to be honest, I've not been to one of your shows yet, but we're trying to make that work. We do. Get prepared to jam. <laughs> Already, I will. Uh, I'll bring my um, bass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Jam with the bass, <laughs> dude. Thank you so much. And you um, I, I've got a little bit more to add to the end of the video, so don't you go anywhere, everybody. But um, Draku, thanks for your time, man. Goodbye. Once again, a big thanks to Draku for taking time out of his busy rock star life to chat with us, and also thanks to you for watching. You are now officially a member of the End of the Video Club, which not everybody joins. The way to prove that you're a member of this club is to leave a comment down below and tell me who you think the world's greatest rock star is or was. Also, floating around your screen are more videos from me, so go click one of those and I will see you there. Cheers! <laughs>